Hormones, also known as endocrines, are chemicals made in our body which work as messengers between brain and body tissues to control and or regulate tissue growth and functions. There are 50 different types of hormones in humans. Out of 50, 22 hormones are directly or indirectly associated with obesity. This is the list of those 22 hormones and unless we understand these hormones, each of these, we cannot really grasp how to control or how to reverse obesity. First, foremost and most important is human insulin which is a peptide synthesized by pancreas which is comprising of two chains, chain, chain A and chain B. So it is known as double chain peptides. Our pancreas has tissue islands known as Langerhans cells. There are two types of Langerhans cells, beta cells and alpha cells. Beta cells secret insulin hormone and alpha cells secret glucagon hormone. Just to remind you, the word liver comes from live plus ER, like from give plus ER is equal to giver. So this is live plus ER, that means liver is our liver, it gives us the life. Liver is our life giver and we must love it and take care of it and we should not torture it. Similarly, the word pancreas comes from two Latin words, pan and creas. Pan means far, wide, all, overall, etc. as if like in panoramic view or panoramic vision. And creas means to create. By the way, this Latin word creas comes from Sanskrit kriya. Insulin primarily is a blood sugar controlling hormone. When we eat anything containing carbohydrates, the blood sugar, blood glucose level rises fast and this gives a stimulation to pancreas and pancreas then secretes insulin and insulin ultimately shifts this blood glucose from the plasma into the hepatocytes, the liver cells or into the skeletal muscle cells, the long skeletal muscle cells. In this graph we can see the blue line is the blood glucose which rises after taking carbohydrate rich food and in the response to which after about 20 to 30 minutes the insulin secreted from the pancreas also starts rising in the blood which ultimately controls the sugar in the blood. There are four functions of insulin. The first and foremost is it shifts glucose from blood plasma into liver brain and muscle cells. Our brain and body doesn't like the sugar more than 1 milligram per 1 ml of blood. That is 100 milligram in 100 ml or 1000 milligram in 1000 ml which is 1 gram in 1 liter. So in our body there is there is 6 there are 6 liters of blood. So at any given time the glucose level total glucose in blood is 6 grams and the insulin keeps on regulating this if the uh, if the sugar goes above this concentration the insulin will kick in and will try to reduce it and if the sugar goes below this level then a hormone opposite hormone known as glucagon will kick in and it will control it will bring the sugar up the second function of insulin is to convert excess glucose into glycogen which is uh, our liver and muscle starch and the glycogen is stored in liver and uh, muscle by insulin. So if the total blood glucose goes above 6 grams in our body, then the insulin kicks in and converts it into glycogen and stores. Glycogen is a branching chain polysaccharide that is formed from excess glucose in the body and our body has maximum 700 grams uh, capacity to store glycogen that is about 10 grams per kilograms of body weight so 700 grams is the limit in a person who is 70 kilo in weight one molecule of glycogen holds three molecules of water so total weight of the wet glycogen in body is 2800 grams uh, that is approximately 2800 calories which is worth of 1.5 days worth of uh, energy function for our body. So our body's total reserve energy in the form of glycogen is just for 1.5 days. 
When glycogen stores are full, that is 700 grams dry weight or 2800 grams wet weight, the third function of insulin kicks in which is conversion of excess glucose now into fat. So when the glycogen stores are full, the, in, uh, the remaining glucose is converted into fat in the form of triglycerides which is known as the nuovo lipogenesis and thus the insulin is our storage hormone. Insulin converts glucose into glycerol that is oil of the glucose and uh, it then combines free fatty acids from the dietary fat in uh, along with to glycerol and uh, usually there are three fatty acids with a, which are attached to one molecule of glycerol and that is how it forms triglyceride. The name triglyceride comes from the fact that it has one glycerol and it has uh, three molecules of uh, fatty acids. So we can imagine triglyceride molecule as a kite with three tails. This is the chemical structure of triglycerides. So we can remember that insulin is a fat building hormone. It converts excess glucose into fat. It converts excess protein into glucose by a process known as glyconeogenesis and then converts this glucose into fat and excess dietary fat, excess dietary oils are also converted into triglyceride fat. So insulin converts anything in excess, any calorie in excess in the body is converted ultimately into fat and stored. So to recap, the first function of insulin is glucose transportation, second function of the insulin is conversion of excess glucose into glycogen, third function is conversion of excess glucose into fat and now the fourth function of insulin is prevention of fats breakdown conversion back into glucose and into ketones. So just imagine that insulin is like a snake which is sitting on the treasure and as long as there is insulin significant amount of insulin in our blood it will not allow the breakdown of fat. Insulin is like a guard dog and the ships are like our fat cells so as long as this ferocious guard dog is present there we cannot touch or we cannot take out any fat from the fat cells. The fat which is made by insulin from excess glucose, excess protein or from dietary oil is first stored into liver which leads to fatty liver disease. And when the fatty liver, the fatty liver is now no more able to uh, store more fat, when the stores are full, the uh, the excess fat in uh, in body is thrown into blood and then these will be sent to the nearest places for storage which is in the viscera in the abdomen in and around the internal organs and then in and around the external organs and this leads to obesity just remember increased levels of insulin means increased level of fat which means increased weight 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 gain and which means obesity Second most important hormone associated with obesity is human growth hormone which is known as somatotropin. Human growth hormone stimulates growth in cells and bones, stimulates cell reproduction, stimulates cell metabolism, increases protein synthesis and causes fat breakdown and burning of the fat for energy. Human growth hormone also increases calcium retention. It builds muscles and makes bones and makes them stronger, stimulates growth of internal hormones in brain which are known as BDNF or brain derived neurotrophic factor, preserves protein in the body and stimulates the immune system. Human growth hormone has three functions. It takes up dietary proteins, makes new proteins and builds muscles, takes up calcium and minerals and makes bones and makes them very strong and it burns fat. Just remember, natural human growth hormone is the best fat burning hormone we have in our body. To recap, insulin is the fat builder and protein burner of our body, whereas growth hormone is fat burner and protein builder of our body. Insulin and growth hormone are opposite to each other, so when insulin is high, the growth hormone is low and that leads to build up of fat and that converts our muscular and masculine body into a fatty obese body. If we decrease insulin to near zero and increase human growth hormone, 
it will decrease the fat it will burn the fat and it will build up muscles and the body can regain the shape from fatty and obese back to the masculine or athletic body human growth hormone starts to decline as the age advances and the levels of human growth hormone secretion in our blood goes down beyond 500 units after the age of 30 because the life now is settled and it becomes more and more sedentary for the people who are in white collar job at the same time with a nice settlement of life there is increased carb in food increased food intake and that leads to increased level of insulin and that's the reason why after the age of 35 when the human growth hormone is at the lowest and insulin is at the highest the obesity begins because the fat building has begun and fat storage has significantly increased if we decrease insulin and if we increase human growth hormone we can convert a obese person into a masculine athletic person even at the age of 70 75 grossly reduced very low level of human growth hormone leads to something known as sarcopenic obesity and in sarcopenic obesity the muscle mass is significantly reduced and the fat around which is significantly increased this also leads to very weak bones and this is the worst form of obesity we must be very very cautious to prevent sarcopenia and sarcopenic obesity and this can be done by keeping keeping the levels of human growth hormone high and insulin level low growth hormone is also known as fountain of youth which keeps our cellular age young even at significantly senior chronological age human growth hormone is available as injections but it is very expensive it's almost like 3000 rupees a day and you need three injections a day which is not the ideal way the ideal way is to increase our own secretion of internal growth hormone not taking anything from outside just to recap insulin and growth hormone are opposite hormones insulin increases obesity and growth hormone dissolves obesity insulin is a fat storage and insulator hormone it is a pro fat hormone whereas human growth hormone or somatotropin is protein a protein and calcium storage hormone it is a body builder it is pro fit hormone prevention or reversal of obesity is the key to longevity and decreasing insulin and increasing human growth hormone is the golden key for reversal of obesity and to achieve longevity so out of 22 insulin and growth hormone are the most important hormones concerned with obesity and its reversal third important hormone is ghrelin it is known as hunger hormone which is secreted in stomach and it is uh, it is interesting to know that is auto inactivated in 30 minutes if we don't eat anything automatically the hunger will vanish after 30 to 40 minutes it is hyper activated by starch salt and refined carbohydrates and for reversal of obesity our aim should be to decrease ghrelin secretion as much as we can fourth important hormone is leptin leptin is a satiety hormone which gives the satisfaction sensation after food to the brain which tells our brain that enough is enough and now stop eating and our aim should be to increase leptin as much as we can so that we don't overeat to recap ghrelin increases appetite and leptin decreases appetite sugars synthetic fructose which is contained in high fructose corn syrup and refined carbohydrates they all block or reduce leptin as a result of which the brain does not receive the satiety signal or feeding full signal and this leads to overeating in spite of not necessary calories high salt high starch highly refined oils and high insulin they all lead to leptin inactivation also the leptin is inactivated by certain chemicals which are added by food industry especially in food such as the potato chips as a result of which if we eat homemade simple unsalted potato chips we can hardly eat half a bowl but a company made potato chips we can eat almost the size of a big bag 
Another classic example is ground nuts or peanuts. When we eat them raw, we cannot eat more than half a fistful. But when it is salted and roasted, we don't like to end, you know, we, I mean the sensation never goes to the brain and we keep eating it more and more and more. Salted and fried peanuts are another example of leptin inactivation. Same way, raw cashew nuts versus fried and salted cashew nuts are another example of leptin inactivation. So for safe and secured weight loss, we want to decrease amount and frequency of ghrelin and we want to increase amount of and sensitivity of leptin. Fifth important set of hormones are known as cortisol and adrenaline which are sympathetic stimulators. Cortisol is actually glucocorticoid which is a stress hormone which is fight or flight response hormone of our body. It increases blood glucose by breakdown of glycogen. Chronically high levels of cortisol ultimately leads to increased insulin which ultimately leads to storage disorder and obesity. For safe and secured weight loss, we must aim to decrease amount and frequency of cortisol glucocorticoid. Sixth is estrogen which is a woman hood hormone. The word estrogen comes from Latin S3 plus genesis. Ultimately these Latin words also come finally from Sanskrit Stri plus Janan. So to say, so to understand, women have 90% estrogen and 10% testosterone in their body and men have 90% testosterone and 10% estrogen in their body. That's why even literally in verbatim sense every she has he and woman and men are inseparable even in words. That's why every mother has a little bit of fatherhood in her and every father has a little bit of motherhood in him. Conjugation and coexistence of testosterone and estrogen is the basis of concept of Ardhanar Narishwar in Hindu religion. Increased levels of estrogen makes a woman's body fat and obese ready for pregnancy. But excessive estrogen also leads to gross obesity which also looks like pregnancy which creates thick and big breasts in men as well as a twin pregnancy like look of the abdomen. Estrogen is primarily synthesized from cholesterol so increased cholesterol levels leads to increased estrogen and that leads to obesity. Then the fattened adipocytes which is this tissue of obesity, this fat starts secreting estrogen of its own and this becomes the largest estrogen secretion gland in our body of weight of 15 to 20, 30 kilograms and hence the obesity and estrogen becomes a vicious cycle, an unstoppable loop. High levels of animal estrogen also come into our body when we eat beef, meat, fish, eggs or dairy milk. The higher level of external estrogen also comes from bisphenol A which is from the plastic bottles and paraben and thalates which are contained in uh, uh, lipsticks, ground or river water which is not refined, I mean which is not filtered, they also contain estrogens from fish and farm animals and hormone replacement therapy also. Uh, there are many ladies who uh, take hormone replacement therapy and contraceptive pills to change the menstrual cycle dates for their convenience for some festivals etc. That also gives rise to external estrogen in our body. Dairy industry feeds their cows with fodder which are very rich in estrogen. The estrogen is added to their fodder and feeding. Hence they give very high amount of thick milk with high cholesterol levels but this is harmful for us to consume because it leads to obesity. So we must reduce estrogen level to as low as possible in order to reverse obesity. Testosterone is our masculinity hormone. It is also known as man hormone or macho man hormone. Like the growth hormone, testosterone makes muscles very strong and bones very strong and gives a Vitruvian man appearance to men or a Hans man like appearance. Low levels of testosterone leads to obesity and womanoid look 
whereas high level of testosterone leads to masculine and athletic look so testosterone and estrogen are opposite hormones like the insulin and growth hormone whereas testosterone and human growth hormone are synergistic hormones which having more or less similar functions eighth important hormone related to obesity is known as neuropeptide y which creates voracious appetite and hunger and craving for carbohydrates rich food which leads to increase in insulin which in turn leads to increase in neuropeptide y or npy npy increase leads to obesity and this becomes a vicious cycle and high sugar high fat diet leads to high npy and our aim must be to reduce npy as much as possible glucagon is a survival hormone which breaks down glycogen which is a liver starch into glucose when the blood sugar goes below 70 mg per 100 ml but perpetually or persistently high levels of glucagon is not good because it keeps on increasing the blood sugar level so our aim should be to reduce glucagon and frequency of glucagon secretion as much as possible tenth important hormone for our concern is known as glucagon like peptide 1 or glp1 increased levels of glp1 in blood causes early satiety and reduced cravings for carbohydrates zero carb low fat and high protein diet will increase glp1 eating fresh turmeric and barberry or dried barberry helps to increase glp1 which decreases hunger and food cravings and our aim should be to increase glp1 levels in our blood eating fresh turmeric and fresh white turmeric which is known as kachi haldi and kachi amba haldi with or before taking food will increase glp1 which will decrease the appetite and it will bring the satiety much earlier barberries do not grow in india they mainly grow in iran but it is available in dried form in india from various online stores and if we eat barberries before meal it reduces it increases glp1 and hence reduces the appetite and brings the satiety earlier another important hormone is cholecystokinin which is known as cck in short it gives sense of fullness in stomach and intestines high carb and high fat diet numbs the sensory receptors of cck in our intestine whereas high protein low fat and nearly zero carb diet increases sensitivity of cck and our aim and our aim should be to increase the levels of cck and the sensitivity of cck peptide yy known as pyy is another important hormone increased level of pyy reduces appetite people who are deficit in pyy feel extreme and repeated hungers they keep eating without the need to eat even when body does not need any calorie thus low pyy leads to obesity so our aim should be to increase peptide yy hormone levels in our blood food rich in plant or phytoproteins lead to increase in pyy four important hormones related to mental health and mood are known as dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphins they are shortly known as dose hormones dopamine is the word which is derived from two latin words dop plus amine it makes us doer or achiever it makes us don not in the sense of mafia or gunda but in the sense of a head of the family or head of the group of people it makes our mind open and uh, donor it makes us to achieve or it makes us to th- do things or die it uh, makes us to achieve perfection it is an anti laziness hormone and you get satisfaction and celebration sense only when the work is completed and done and it also controls the neurons of movement and facilitates the movement of our body oxytocin is another hum- important hormone the word oxytocin comes from two latin words oxy means life and tocos means to give birth hence oxytocin is also known as love hormone all nine types of human love are only due to oxytocin and that's why love is also known as chemistry or biochemistry it is the oxytocin which makes you to love life love to live longer all forms of life nature beauty family pets 
and even your own wife serotonin is another important mood hormone which gives us serenity shant avikshubd gambhir nature serendipity it makes us seer it makes us seeker it regulates our sleep it makes our mind like a sanyasi or vitragi and it also controls our sexual desires or sexual evolution serotonin deficiency leads to mood swings and severe deficiency leads to depression the word endorphin comes from two latin words endo plus morphins means the morphins which are produced in our own body and they naturally relieve pain they makes us happy they enhance the pleasure they boost our self esteem and they support weight loss another set of hormones always associated with obesity is a set of thyroid hormones which is known as t3 t4 and calcitonin our thyroid gland secretes t4 which is known as thyroxine which is then converted into t3 which is known as triiodothyronine t3 is our fat burning hormone thyroid also secretes a hormone known as calcitonin which regulates the calcium uptake and deposition of calcium into bones and teeth t3 is our fat burner hormone t4 secreted by thyroid is converted to t3 which is an active form mainly by liver and to a small part by gut and kidneys obesity induced fatty liver and compressed kidneys cannot do this conversion very well so fat burning is stopped or decreased so obesity increases and this becomes an endless loop which is known as t4 t3 vicious cycle bdnf or brain derived neurotropic factors or neurotropins are the hormones which are secreted inside the brain this is very similar to human growth hormone what is human growth hormone for the muscles and bones is the bdnf for our brain bdnf keeps our brain active the neurons dividing neurons healthy and strong when the bdnf is decreased the neurons they start dying and shrinking which leads to dementia and here in this mri picture you can see that with decreased bnf the overall size of the brain shrinks with proper and enough bdnf levels the brain neurons each neuron communicates with synapses to about 10000 neurons but when the bdnf is decreased the synapses uh, decrease in number as a result of which uh, one neuron now hardly communicates to about 3000 other neurons and this decrease constant decrease of synapses leads to dementia it leads to decreased intelligence and decreased co- cognition and difficulty even in the motor movements bdnf are also important and useful for constant rewiring of the brain synapses and constant rewiring of the brain is very very important to learn newer and newer things every day and when the rewiring of the brain stops the new learning also stops actually entire learning anything which we learn is thanks to the rewiring of synapses of the brain rewiring of the neuronal synapses is known as neuroplasticity which is induced by bdnf and it is the neuroplasticity which is actual learning exercise can increase bdnf at any age missed sleep or inadequate uh, sleep leads to reduction in bdnf improper nutrition when the fat and sugar are high in blood the bdnf decreases and as a result of which obese persons they start losing their memory much faster and much earlier in age and chronic stress leads to higher level of cortisol which acts against the bdnf and which also leads to senile dementia obesity obesity induced type 2 diabetes obesity induced cardiovascular diseases depression and uh, all all the diseases associated with obesity leads to decrease in bdnf which ultimately leads to dementia and cognitive impairment when bdnf levels are chronically low this is what happens to our brain but the good and happy news is that at any age if we can reverse the obesity we can increase our bdnf level and reverse the senile dementia and the brain atrophic changes at any age adiponectin is another important hormone associated with obesity the word adiponectin comes from two words nectar 
and adipose. So it is the nectar of adipose tissue or the juice of adipose cells. Adipose cell is the another name for fat cells. Adiponectin is usually secreted by brown adipose cells which are active cells telling the brain that I have enough fat you please stop sending any more. It is an anti-inflammatory hormone. It increases insulin sensitivity for cells to consume and burn glucose. Too much fat inside the adipose fat cells causes them to almost die so they stop secreting adiponectin. There are three types of fat in our body which are known as brown or bright or white. Now brown fat are, uh, is made up of brown adipocytes and they look brown because they have lot of active mitochondria and the nucleus is in the center and it is active. Whereas bright or breeze adipocyte has more fat accumulation and as the fat accumulation takes place in these adipocytes the number of mitochondria decreases and hence the cell becomes less active and when too much of fat is uh, deposited in the adipocyte the entire cell becomes laden with so much of fat that the nucleus is pushed on one side it is so much compressed that nucleus can hardly function and the number of mitochondria decreases so much that the white adipocyte really looks white under the microscope because there are no mitochondria and the cell nucleus is almost lost. In a normal person, the fat cells are normal and slim. In phase 1 of obesity, which is increase in weight by 7 kilograms beyond the body mass index, these three slim cells, they now become fat and when the weight gain is more than 7 kilograms, these fat cells now no more can contain any more fat, so they start dividing and the number of fat cells they increase so the adipose tissue keeps on increasing by division of the fat cells. So same like an obese person the adipose cells also become obese laden with fat and bulging and lazy and less active. This is the electron microscopic picture of lean fat versus obese fat. Lean fat is brown fat, obese fat is white fat. White adipose tissue is also known as white elephant of our body which is just for show and not for any function or any help. We must aim to reverse white adipose cells back to brown adipose cells. White fat cells are stubborn like mules, they don't want to work, they don't want to burn fat. Intermittent fasting and induction of autophagy in our body is one of the best ways to convert the white adipose tissue back to brown adipose tissue, adipose tissue or from inactive to active fat cells. This process of autophagy was discovered by Professor Dr. Yoshinori Oshumi of Japan for which he was awarded 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine and we must learn from him how to induce autophagy which is the best way of reversal of obesity. Another important hormone associated with obesity is, T, T, is known as TNF-alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha. The derangement of this hormone leads to uh, production of uh, unregulated cancer cells and that's why obese persons are at a higher risk of developing various types of cancers. Another set of hormones associated with obesity is known as interleukin-6 or in short known as IL-6. There are two types positive and negative and negative IL-6 is pro-inflammatory causing inflammation in bones and joints. It is pro-atherogenic causing uh, plaques in the arteries and it promotes insulin resistance and hence leads to type 2 diabetes and the negative IL-6 is much much higher in adipose and in uh, obese persons. Higher levels of prostaglandin hormones in obese persons lead to prostate gland problems as well as chronic inflammation joints of joints and, and muscles and chronic pain here and there off and on. In an obese person with type 2 diabetes, the white, white adipose tissue cells are more in number, profound in number, millions and billions and each uh, uh, enlarged white cell has many many more number of ACE2 receptors and ACE2 receptors are the entry point or locking point for the coronavirus and that's why obese persons are at a very high risk of catching the infection by coronavirus as well as very high rate of mortality. 
so to recap there are 22 hormones which is like a symphony which plays with the obesity and the master of this symphony is insulin and we know that at any age obesity is the mother of multiple diseases just remember that our waistline is our lifeline longer the waistline shorter the lifeline in women if the waist is more than 80 cm and in men if the life if the waistline is more than 90 cm the life is is shorter when the waistline increases by 10 cm the life decreases by 10 years our body needs minimum 3% of fat which is essential fat for function of brain and the neurons as insulation and about 10% of the body weight should be fat as a storage for few days of famine whereas an obese person usually has 40 to 45 50% of fat in his body and because we all have always ignored the difference between food and nutrition and we have never taken a deep dive into food science to be understood and that's the reason why most of us are now developing obesity ignoring food physiology is not only expensive it is dangerous for the person as well as for his family so in the next lecture we will learn the food science and food physiology and thoroughly understand the difference between food and nutrition thank you for your attention